because you set the expectations. I think that's super important. I think a lot of people don't understand that the hierarchy of needs. Sex is the last thing because you're just focused on getting through the day, getting your training done, getting your food in. You don't have that much energy because you're fatigued. Um, so you can only do the those basic needs. Then you also have to produce something. We don't have to produce anything. Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> so that's that's like, another thing. Yeah. We have to get a boner. It's like you guys don't have to get a boner. It, it's it's a little different. Yeah. And we're usually one thumping the most of the time. <laughs> on today's episode of AMA Podcast with Kristen Milos, we had my wife on, Lexia Tuttle. We discussed the ins and outs of relationship with competing and bodybuilding. We had a lot of questions come in, but we ended up categorizing them into three categories. So we had the low libido, emotionally unavailable, and of course, meeting expectations, or if somebody's not showing that support that you hope to have within competing. Um, Milos and myself had different perspectives. This was very, very insightful. I think a lot of you guys are gonna get a lot from this. I know competing can be very difficult on a relationship, but it doesn't have to be. So please check this out. You guys are gonna learn a lot. It's gonna be helpful. And of course, ask more questions, comment below, and please subscribe. Also, check out drinkmore.com, your mineral-based water enhancer. It comes in sweet tea and lemonade. Good way to incentivize the adequate hydration in a day. Get that water down. It's a product that's designed by me. So please check it out. And I will talk to you guys next time. Hey, how's it going, Milos? Yeah, good. I I just, <laughs> and uh, good to see you. Good to meet you here officially. We're going to introduce you right now. I was excited. Actually, I was telling you guys about my mochi thing and then... Uh, uh, I forgot to take one bite before we started, so now I have to wait until we finish. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Milo, so um, I got my wife today. I know you know her from our the tech department. Every time we have tech issues, she's yeah. over here. You, you see her doing her thing. But I just hear him yelling at you from the computer every time he does a podcast. Yeah, guy, why I'm are always you like, Lexia, audio's not working. <laughs> yeah, she's the boss. Let me tell you. I'm serious. Women have a little bit more of this gene for technology and all this stuff. I'm serious. 100%. I mean, or I just married too old. I don't know. I don't know, Milos. <laughs> she, she's eight years younger than me. So I'm still I'm still in the 90s. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll, we'll touch that subject. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. So everybody's listening. We're going to, uh, we have some questions from everybody. We're going to answer some questions that you guys asked about bodybuilding relationship. This is something that comes up and it comes up in regards to people's emotional state, sex drive, irritability kind of changing throughout the year and how to mitigate that. Uh, actually mitigate that, but what we can tell you. We are support each other, yep. the different trials yep. that we've experienced. In and that. obviously every single one of us have had to experience Milos. You've had the most experience <laughs> considering how many times you've been competing. I don't mean anything to do with relationships. <laughs> I just mean in regards to You've done a lot more shows than me, so you've you know you you have yeah. a lot to add to the pot, yeah. and of course, this being my wife and her being with me right from my first pro show in 2015, all the way until when I stopped in 2019. Yeah, um, and so, secondary our clients like sometimes we get husbands and wives, so we see both sides of the spectrum, and then we have to give advice on both of those. And I've had him had to call some of my clients. I've had to had calls with some of his clients. Like it's like yeah. It's kind of nuts in that yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. I cannot just to tell you, I cannot have a better couple of hosts to do this kind of questioning right now. Because yeah, I'm gonna let you speak. And being that not just that I competed 110 times, I was uh, <laughs> married. Uh, this is my sixth wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, at least uh, it's an even number. Yeah. So I, <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a lot of experiences about this, but uh, I'm gonna let you first speak because you are still living it. I mean, Chris, you're gonna compete soon. Unless Alexa doesn't know about it. <laughs> I do. I know everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, when I got the podcast um, that day, you said something to me about it. And then I know you don't bullshit. And Jose said something to me about it. And he doesn't bullshit. So I asked her what she thought of it um, and kind of told her my game plan strategy. And she's obviously, she's always been supportive. I was so, like, okay. Yeah. I'll give a background on this probably a little bit. Mm -hmm. Would oh. you like to give us a background? Yeah, so we've been together nine, almost nine years, married almost six, uh, but business partners pretty much the entire time. So I think we do have a little bit of a different perspective in a sense where we're with each other 24-7 and we actually really try to communicate through everything. 
Um, the only differences we had is when we started dating, I was early twenties, he was like 30. And so uh, he was kind of solidified in himself and I was still finding myself. So I think that also created a different, I guess, dynamic. <laughs> yeah. So in regards to both coaches being coaches, both being each other 24 seven, both being with each other, going through preparations. Um, I guess we could say yeah. we have quite a bit to add to the pot. This yeah. is actually her office, Milos. Yes, <laughs> he uses my office. He's been, yes. Uh, yeah. I stopped competing by the time we started getting together pretty much or, or a little bit after. So I was only dieting for like photo shoots and everything, but I've been through all of his shows. So we have, I guess, both sides of the spectrum. I'm mean. I'm very mean. Yeah. I'm very mean. Yeah. When women I, don't, I like food. I, I, I When women it. diet, they're a little more mean. Yeah, than me. I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. But okay, so the question from the audience was, uh, how about the uh, relationship in bodybuilding? This is this is the question. No, we'll so, go over it now. Yeah. So the first question, we'll go ahead and ask this one because I think this is a a common theme. Sometimes, question is, how do you get wife support when she doesn't like bodybuilding? I tend to get quiet close to a show. And now, I, I'm gonna say firsthand experience with this one is I was previously married to somebody who hated and despised bodybuilding. Um. And I do get quiet as well. So when I'm in prep, you know, like, you know, people say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Right. And so I would always be quiet. I would be able to internalize my fatigue. Um, when people would do things that irritate me, I would just be quiet instead of snapping or throwing my fist through the wall. And that's how I handled the level of fatigue and prep. Now, obviously, ultimately my previous marriage didn't work out. Was it only related to bodybuilding? No, but, um, you can't expect somebody who you're married to or with to give you support if they don't like it. Now, however, if it's something that you loved going into the relationship and she knew that. She accepted you for that. She should have versus mm -hmm. you started bodybuilding after the fact might be a different story. Um, and there's different context to this where whether she's being very passive or manipulative, but I don't think anybody should expect support if they don't like it. They should expect just to be left alone yeah. with that particular thing um, because there's a big difference. Like if she likes croquet and I don't like it, I mean, I would still go to her competitions, but I would hope she wouldn't want me to go to every practice, right? And then every time she did something, I hope she wouldn't expect me to be a super cheerleader if I really don't like it. I would just let her do her thing. Like she should let me do my thing. I can That's be my in perspective. ballroom now. You're supportive. Yeah, but I don't like, I'm not like. It doesn't make me mean. So <laughs> Right. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, it depends yeah. on the level. Some people want support where they want that, that other person to be like, oh, can you make my food for me? Uh, can you yeah. do this? Can, can you carry my bags at bodybuilding show? If you're into an individual sport and she doesn't like it, you're the one man army. That's why you yeah. have your friend. Um, unless she's being very negative and manipulative, that's different. I think it's multifaceted. Like it really depends. Like say that wife has no insight to her own behavior. Then there, then you're always going to be like this. He has no insight on his behavior. You know, have no insight on yours. And then you're just going to clash all the time. Right. But I think if he is keeping up with what he has to do in the house, or maybe she just picks up a little bit and there's no resentment. I think that's good. Right. You're talking it out. You're making it work. I think when it happens, what I've seen it be extreme is the guy is just like, I'm not going to pay attention to the family. I'm not going to pay attention to you whatsoever. I'm not even going to talk to you. And I'm just going to do my own thing. And you have to be okay with that. I think there is a range like where you still have to take care of your responsibilities to an extent. They can definitely lean in a little bit and pick up some up because you're tired, but you still have to be, I guess, responsible. And I guess you have to define what support means. Yeah. Okay. How about your take? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm glad. And let's get a little bit deeper in discussion. And just for both of you to know, I'm not a guy to sugarcoat it and not get confrontational. I, I do. I think that for good conversation and in every relationship, besides love, trust, and honesty, communication is most important. So if you don't communicate long enough and deep enough, yeah, you're going to have these compromises. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, you know, what I was talking about in bodybuilding in general, you can minimize, optimize, compromise, or maximize. Okay, so let's focus on this, maximizing relationship in a marriage, okay? There's no question if, uh, if I'm a bodybuilder, okay, 
oh, you might not like it. If you don't like it, it's going to be a 1 million percent uh, uh, problem because you live and breathe 24 hours a day, 365 a year bodybuilding. So you're going to run into it. I mean, it's already the wrong choice. And I, I'll tell you this, as you mentioned now, like if you go in a relationship and maybe you didn't start bodybuilding then, which was my case, I had a girlfriend for many years in Serbia and then I started bodybuilding. You know, and then I started training for Mr. Universe and, and came to the point of, you know, I'm going to the gym twice a day. Oh, gym or me? Oh, God. <laughs> Later. I mean, I mean I, I, it might we, also be like your level. If you're at the pro level, then that's a little bit different, too. It's like if, yes. they're, if they're doing it as a true hobby and they're really an amateur, then I'm going to be like, OK, well, you still need to keep up some things. But if they're like a pro, like say that he was really struggling and it was a big show, I'll be like, you know what? Let me pick up some slack. But I mean, like Milos, like you said, that's the support. If they don't like it, we have to define what support means. And two, like you said, it does take apart a lot of your life. So if they really don't like it and they're very negative, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. But here, and Alexia, I mean, I'm not going to pick on you. I'm not, uh, you know, here talking man and women should just put up. It's vice versa, too. If you're a competitor and uh, Chris has to take care of you, you have to define it. Number one. Yep. What do we want? We want to maximal everything. We want maximal support, maximal love. Okay. We we would love that our wife or our husband love what we are doing. So if you know you guys are both competing, even better. You know, you're in the same field. But now really define, okay. Are we gonna butt heads? Dieting, like she, Alexis said, she would wanna eat, she's hungry and she get get moody and all. You already know that that comes with the territory, okay? You have to be prepared. <laughs> Maybe bite the tongue, you know, every so often. But you've been there, done that, right? But then focus, that's my wife. That's my everything. And I'm going to support her. And thank God she has a passion for something because how many people you see around that just expire in their life? They don't live yeah. life. They don't have a something driving well I was just telling him again, like every guy I dated before him, I lost interest like six months in because they had no, there's nothing left. They had no drive, no ambition to to do something more. So I don't know. It, I, we just clicked and it kind of just ramped up everything in our lives. Ramped no, up. no, you're right. You're right, Milos. That's a different perspective that I didn't see from the question is like, uh, you know, being the significant, like at first when she started ballroom dancing, for example, I don't like dancing, Milos. I don't like it. I don't want to be part in it. So when she started dancing, I thought it was cool. I would watch her competitions. And then long story short, two years later, I'm taking ballroom dance classes. I didn't ask. And didn't she ask. didn't ask me just because kind of like now I'm like, I kind of want to learn. That way I'm not a complete ass. So if we go somewhere, I know how to do salsa. <laughs> I know how to bachata. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like. I'd like to know something, but so, so maybe we can categorize this as this, have a conversation beforehand on what kind of support you need. Like with him, every prep, we had a conversation be like, Hey, stop asking me what's wrong. Well, that's, that's coming. We'll talk about okay. that later. But like yeah. what I'm saying is yeah. define what support you need and what support is between you two. Yeah. And then work from there. Yeah. It's like, don't expect her to go to the gym twice a day. If she's not into the gym, right? If she is, that's great. If she is, she's, that's great. Um, but you know what? There's a lot of couples and I, and this happens a lot where like they get irritated that their husband is not eating bad food with them. Oh, that's just weird. Yeah. I, I get that with clients, Milo. So they're like, oh, I haven't had a cheat meal in three weeks. I'm like, you're in prep. They want a like, dad bod, man. So the, it's like, well, she gets irritated that I go out and like, I'm the only one not eating. Like, why does she care what you're doing? I, I told her this. If she, because I'm very strict with my eating. And I, I, that makes me happy. If she would rag on me on how I ate, this would be done. Yeah, like, it'd be done. Like, don't, uh, don't I mean, bark up my tree about my food. You said the right word, makes you happy, okay? It makes, it makes me happy. happy. It makes you successful in the field that you chose. And she's supposed to support you. If any of the, uh, give you a hard time for that, I mean, strike one, second warning, See you later. I mean, there's no compromises. Look, you can compromise all your life or you yeah. can stand for yourself and say, like, look, I love you to that. We are together. This is my chosen profession. I hope you're going to support me. You don't want to come to the gym twice a day. You don't need to stay home. I'm going to do my thing. Uh, but when I come here, 
I need my peace. I need my food. I need, uh, you know, whatever you need. Okay, and define it. I mean, isn't it the greatest pleasure? I mean, they're givers and takers. And I know that this society is becoming more as a take, take, take. You know, what's that for yeah. me? You know, take, uh, Check. It's a 10 times greater gift giving than receiving. If I can do something to somebody and, uh, you know, wow, and you see them enjoy, put a smile on their face, make them happy. If you can make them happy every single day, you're going to have a happiest life, you know, ever. Yeah. But if you, oh, shit, you know, I want to eat pizza and he wants to eat chicken breast. I don't know, shit, let me complain. Why don't you have a, like, what the hell? I they're mean, just mad at themselves that they don't have that discipline or there's something that's internal with them that they have a problem and they're putting that on you, which is not fair. But I mean, we have people uh, that we know that like basically have to tiptoe around the other or hide that they're doing certain things. And that's just a resentment. I had to do that in my past relationship. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Not me. <laughs> yeah, but, but Chris, this is it. My father, Dr. Science of Neuropsychiatry, since I was a kid, told me, listen, son, there's a right thing to do and a wrong thing to do. There's a right and wrong, right? What do you want to choose? Right. So in any situation, you ask yourself, whatever that is, is this the right thing to do? You said in your last relationship, you were kind of, you know, you is this the right thing to do? You, Chris Tuttle, that uh, proud of who you are and doing this with a passion and all this stuff, you have to hide something and compromise? It, it's no compromises. I, I'm serious. If this message would be something, why would we come? If you guys are uh, not perfect match and perfect fit, and then do things for you and to grow. You know how they say, it's not just what you make me feel, like how you make me, if I become a better person with you, that's uh, monumental, right? It's just like, oh, you make me, no. You're supposed to, uh, you know, enhance each other. Yeah. And uh, there's no better by happiness and support. God damn. Oh, I did this when I did it. You know, shit. Please, I mean, Anybody that is listening, there are no compromises in life. Champions in anything do not compromise. So you define what is right, what is uh, wrong, and then how I can optimize or maximize. You, Chris, can be on Olympia stage. And uh, now, you know, let's put it this way. He's already like semi-retired, retired, maybe thinking business and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm just jumping in. And I said this always, if I die tomorrow, <laughs> uh, I want you to uh, get this message. I'm dead serious. You have a God-given structure and shape, ability to get the rip beyond you know, belief. You're so knowledgeable and all this stuff. And this is your passion. This is what makes you who you are. Another thing, would it be good for your business if you know the certified nutritionist, also a pro bodybuilder, came back uh, whatever, after you almost retire and make it to the Olympia. It's great in any which way you look at, okay? So you decide, boom, this is what I'm going to do, okay? And then Alexia, this is my plan. Are you going to be a team? Are you going to accept it? Uh, you know, you're too busy with something else. Okay, if you're busy with something else, yeah, you're focusing this or focus on this, but on a time we are together, let's maximize whatever that might be, whatever makes you happy. But really... So messages, don't accept compromises. Why? Why would you? Just going to lead to resentments and it's going to tear you apart anyways. <laughs> but, yeah, but what Milo said about which is key is like, you know, obviously there's compromise in relationship, but in regards to talking about when someone's not a match and you're having to back off so much of who you are or of what makes you happy for somebody else that may not be a match because I've been there before. And what's is funny, Milos, my accountant's daughter, after we got together and she did our numbers for our business and she knows us personally, we're still friends with her and seeing where we are, she goes, Chris, when you got out of that relationship within like one year, you just went, Oof. everything in your life just got better 20 fold ever since you met her. It's like the right match helped yeah. just accelerate my business, my bodybuilding, Everything in my life came together mm. instead of, like you said, if you have to compromise so much and it really is bringing down your happiness or your drive or your dream or whatever, 
there, there, there really can't be any compromise. You know, I, I totally agree. Yeah, and uh, you know, so Alexia, before you say, I had a okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna just speak English and say I had a toxic relationship. I mean, you know, so no matter what I tried, it didn't work, right? And then you end up in arguments and arguments. And I, I said this every time my father also told me, if you uh, uh, argue and you cannot have a intelligent conversation and you know get your point across, you know, and you're gonna continue arguing, do you realize that you're gonna argue every single day to the rest of your life? Do you want to, again, have this kind of life? So for me, when I, you know, talk to my friends and they say, yeah, I argue, why would you argue? Hold on, hold on, stop right there. And then repeated arguments, I said, this is going in a very bad way. And it's going to end up even worse. You know how it is. Then was the last straw defeated. something like, I'm just not happy? And then, not happy, and then becomes a hate and resentment, yeah. like you say, and now you want to do something, you know, Jesus Christ. You know, so anybody that has the first argument, why would you argue? Please, aren't you supposed to be your best friends? Aren't you to love each other, to get together, to live together? How mm -hmm. can you argue for the love of God? So it took me <laughs> 59 years, you know, to get there, you know. Hey, you got there. <laughs> well, I finally got there. Yeah, you know, so you know how you, and we talk about this as far as training, Chris, you mentioned before when old farts come and say, hey, when I was your age, you know, we don't want to hear it. So I say, I'm that guy now. But also all these old people, when they're telling us these advices, you, you don't want to listen, you know, right? Nobody does, but it comes with the experience. It just, the, the thing, no matter how young or old you are, okay, Alexa is eight years younger. So, you know, it, it's not even, you know, that considerable, you know, this is quite normal, right? So you consider a little bit two uh, different generations and you're a man, she's a woman. And, okay, let's find the frequency that we can speak perfect language. I want to do something to you, like Alexia. And you're like, Chris, I want to do something for you. And you should already know what, what makes each other happy. You should already know, right? So you don't need to ask what makes you happy and then do it. If you know what makes you happy, you should do it. And and person's going to realize it. Oh, my God. You know, so especially when it's not expected. And what is that? That's a sign of extreme love and care, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you do things that other person loves and you do it for them before they ask or ever ask. I mean, that, that that's that's what it's at, I think. Yeah, it's you're 100% right because – just and this kind of ties into the support or someone not liking what somebody's doing because ultimately if i don't like dance myself personally but i see that it makes her happy and then i bought her dance sessions and i saw that made her happy that should make me happy mm -hmm. right of course man it's, it's great because i still love to lift but so we've always had that mutual joy but yeah. it, it's it's difficult because i think it comes down to a regular relationship communication in general before it even comes down to this. It's like, how can you communicate? How can you get on the same frequency yes. before with life in general? <laughs> but but, there is, but yeah. Chris, this is huge because now they are, you're a living example. So for people that are listening, if you guys didn't notice, Chris, he's dancing. He would never go, <laughs> he would never go to dance if it's up to him, right? But he supported Alexia, okay? And then went there a few times, maybe watch her, and then even try it. And right now he's a salsa dancer and God, God knows what else. I mean, that's a perfect example of the most beautiful support. And I, even at this moment, maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, at all, but you're doing it, you know, for her. And there's that extra step, not just that you accepted her dancing, even dancing with her. I mean, Alexia, I, I hope you realize. That's an act of love. Yes. Yes. That's the love. Because he's he's a service guy. Like he doesn't. He's not very emotional in terms of like romantic. I guess you could say. But he takes care of me, and that's his acts of service is how he shows his love. So I think it's important to know your partner. Like I've made her breakfast every day for almost nine years. Yeah, it's been a. Long and I make time. dinner. I make breakfast and dinner. That's I'm the I'm the cooking guy. I do all the bills and laundry because I like financial. Oh, I can't stand bills. So, and I oh, handle all that stuff for him. So. The whole, all that money stuff, Milos, I can't deal with it. I can, that and technology, I can't deal. Yeah, I, I do all that. 
All right. The, the next question, which is, it's a great question. And I have so many funny answers to this and there's one. There's multiple of these. That and came this through. is the most common question asked. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with low libido during prep and manage our partner? Low sex drive. And, and these are all men saying this. So uh, there was a couple women. Well, women were demanding that from the men. <laughs> There's a couple. And I will first off by saying this. Every guy their entire life is trying to get laid. <laughs> and we've always had to work, 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 work to get it and go long periods of time without it until eventually the female decides to, I don't want to say give it up, but like decides to share. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're used to not having it. Women are used to having it on demand all the time. So the second they don't have it, it tends to be a little more a psychological shock to them. And two things I'll really just sum it up in regards to prep is one, have the conversation beforehand mm. saying that, hey, sex drive is going to be a little low. It doesn't mean I'm not attracted to you. It doesn't mean I'm cheating on you. It just means I'm a little more fatigued. I might not be as intimate and have that much energy. It's only temporary. I'll be back. And then the second is, we've dealt with it our entire life. <laughs> you guys can handle just a couple months of having sex at a minimum and then just tough it out. We'll be back. Yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. It's perfect because you set the expectations. I think that's super important. I think a lot of people don't understand that. The hierarchy of needs, sex is the last thing because you're just focused on getting through the day, getting your training done, getting your food in. You don't have that much energy because you're fatigued. Um, so you can only do the, those basic needs then. You also have to produce something. We don't have to produce anything. Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> so that's that's like, another thing. We have to get a boner. It's like, you guys don't have to get a boner. It, it's it's a little different. Yeah. And we're usually one thumping the most of the time. So it's like, geez. So your knees hurt and you're like, I'm broken. And then <laughs> you can't do anything. Cut, anyway. us, cut us a break. Cut us a break. But anyway, so like it, it, it evolved. Every prep he did or every, every cut I did, because uh, we did, it was easier when we were doing it at the same time because I would do my thing. He would do, do his thing. It was whatever. And then any prep he was doing when I wasn't, wasn't dieting, it'd be like, I'm like, okay, that was every two weeks. That's, that's good. The next one was every three weeks. I'm like, oh, he was suffering during that prep. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like, it's funny. It's really funny. But like, I, I have to, every once in a while, I need that reassurance. So I'll go, Chris, you're still attracted to me, right? And they'll be like, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. Just checking. Love you. Bye. And then like, so sometimes I would need that reassurance and just give them reassurance. I think that's important. Yeah, it's like, I try to explain to, I try to, Milos, what I try, <laughs> Milos, when I say so to my clients, I go, listen, it, it's like, it's kind of like when you're nauseated, Okay, I'm not saying what makes you nauseated. When you're nauseated, you don't want to have sex, but you could look at a pair of boobs and be like, those are nice boobs, but I just don't want to do anything with them right now. <laughs> Maybe later. So it's kind of like the attractiveness is there, but my state of mind is not there to want to do something about it. You know what I mean? And as a woman, we just want to know that you're still attracted to us. Yeah. And that's it. If I said that to her, she'd be like, are you saying my boobs are making you nauseated? I'm like, I'm like, no, no. Well, I like to twist his words. That's what I do. <laughs> By the way, uh, Milos, if you didn't know, I live to make fun of this man. Like, I scare him. I make fun of him. That's great. It, it, it's just I what it. I do. So. I love it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I love it. But listen, okay. I don't want to be... Uh... No, flat out say it. I don't want to be wrong, wrong at this one. You know, but, but, but then again, I promise you, I competed 110 times. 110 times throughout the years, right? I don't know what that means, low libido. I I do not understand. So you didn't have a problem with it. You're lucky. I mean, lucky. But, but yeah, not just that. I mean, there are certain things, you know, we men, we live for a few things. And one of the, uh, not one of the, but the top list <laughs> is having sex. I mean, 100%. Yes. Is, uh, okay. So I, I don't see how, I mean, your mind works on this. Okay, I'm enjoying my food. I'm enjoying my training. All that, and but all this is secondary to the main thing that we live for. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So I I don't know. Uh, again, this is a, this is an interesting subject. You have a lot of people. I have a guys that come up to me and uh, they tell me, okay, they they have it. Uh, you examine a little bit what they're taking when they start occurring, and then you fix it. I mean, gee, uh, but. Uh, there are certain things that, um, I mean, at least in my in my hierarchy, I made it mandatory 
these things are mandatory. I mean, I don't know what that means. Uh, once every two weeks or three weeks or something, and I have like uh, once a month or something. Why you you go once a month to see a movie or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you you were giving that example. Oh, nice boobs, but I'm nauseated. I could be nauseated, but still touch it. Once I touch it, that's all. <laughs> like, These are great. These are yeah, great. You could juggle it and shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. This this is. Uh, if somebody would ask me specifically, I would just question, what do you mean? You know, dieting. Uh, and I mentioned to you before, I think, back in the day in Serbia, you know, we had a guy that uh, would suggest no carbs and no fat. So all you eat is boiled fish, you know, oh. so you can imagine. So even with this kind of no carbs, no fat, no nothing, you know, it's like still, okay, to be fair, I was, uh, you know, early 20s so you know the wind blows and you know, it doesn't matter yeah. that you can eat <laughs> you know but but still i'm really puzzled i mean uh, i'm glad that you said it and obviously the, it happened to you because alexia is mentioning you know uh milos i think it's, it's a lot of mindset i mean if you can get the excuse me okay i'm gonna be just blunt if you can get the boner once every two weeks you know that you can get it every day so it's not oh like, yeah, oh, I can get a, Oh, I mean, I could work on it. And I get, get it if I really exactly, want it. exactly, Mundo. You know, work. <laughs> it's on like, it. but, but you heard what she said. She was, oh, I can work on it again if I want to. If but, I really want. But it. she yeah, wants me. Yeah, that's the problem. She wants me to come yeah. on to her. Yeah, of course, mm -hmm. of course. But, but Milos, it's funny. Is I'm glad that you don't lose your sex drive because that way we have somebody in the group that doesn't have that problem. Because I do have clients that never lose their sex drive, but most of them do. And for those of you guys that are listening. If you bottom out your estrogen too much, if you're on too much letrozole or something like that, your sex drive can tank. That's for sure. Well, stress can also do it too. Right. But some people, I don't know, like you said, Neil, as a mindset, the second I cut calories, the, the second I cut calories, my interest starts to decrease, decrease, decrease. I'm like walking around the house naked. I'm just like, hi. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. It just. I'm my ass. I'm like, hi. It honey, over how accidentally. Are you? you know. <laughs> if, but, what is weird? What, read this. Read this. It's weird. But with me, which is odd, is it's so food related because if I have a high carb day, the, and by the end of the day and the next day, my horniness went from zero to 10. Yeah. And then two days later, it's back to a zero again. Yeah, when, just, when I was cutting, I was like, you have four minutes. <laughs> I, was, I was so, I was like, you don't have, you don't have that long. Milo's like, time limit over here. <laughs> what I was, I was so hungry and I was like, hurting and i'm like yeah you, i mean i can give you maybe five i was like go ahead she, she's like, you got, <laughs> second, second. Second. You, you, you did the stopwatch and say you have it four minutes i've done it i did it oh she did it for her oh she's like, like, I'm like come on i'm like come on she's like no, no no i'm like listen i'll do it in three minutes she goes three minutes yeah. she goes pulls out her phone she goes okay i'm gonna time this i'm like no 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 don't time it it's gonna give me anxiety then i'm not gonna be able to do it <laughs> it was funny, funny. Oh, Chris, you say I can do it twice. This this is, uh, you know, forever. Four minutes. Milos, yeah. we're all not like you, Milos, okay? <laughs> she. <laughs> oh but, hey, now we, we covered guys, both guys grounds. Hey, listen, listen, I mean, I, I would just suggest you, uh, have a calendar, right? And then you put the mandatory things. And then you can, uh, I had before, circle means something, check mark means something else. And, you know, you have all these symbols. And then by the end of the month, you can see how many symbols. It, it should be every day something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. I did keep a tracker once. Posing that, Monday, that Wednesday, Friday, smash Saturdays and smash Sundays. And then and just have, have your protocol with your cycle and everything on the calendar. So everything's all mapped out. <laughs> this is this is another good one. We'll, we'll see about this one with you, Milos. Um, and I become like this. Um, being emotionally unavailable during prep where fatigue sets in, you might be on a little trend, estrogen might be a little low, you're depleted, and you just don't have that same level of touchiness, emotional connection, where you're as you get closer and closer to the show, you're more and more driven and focused and being emotionally unavailable. I'm for sure emotionally unavailable the last four weeks. I just exist. I do everything in the house I'm supposed to. I keep up with my chores. I don't slack. I don't snap. 
So you um, actually get more productive. I get very productive. Mm -hmm. I just get quiet. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm really fatigued, I'm not going to be having a grand conversation, right? <laughs> it's going to be more task at hand versus like just talking, you know? Um, and that's honestly, a lot of people are like that. Would you say I am when, when I cut? Yeah, you don't talk to me. Yeah, I don't. I just want to know what he thought because I would, I, I'm a project person. I love business stuff and I love those types of things. So I just dive into business and dive you into You don't want thing. me in your way. No, no. Because yeah. I need to be, I shut my office door because I can't hear him talk text all day. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, Milos. It's like when I'm in prep, I'm wicked productive and like the whole kitchen, all food to be cooked and be prepared, all her meals will be made. Every kitchen's my area. If she's in the kitchen, I'm like, out. Oh, out, out. And like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. That's all. Everything's clean. Coffee's made for her. That's my thing. So, like, as long as she doesn't interfere with my thing you won't and I don't interfere mine. with her thing in preparation, everything works. Yeah. 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 But, but it's okay. I'm going to be a little philosophical here, too, because again, I'm raised by psychiatrists and uh, it's always what you're always told to think, overthink everything. <laughs> You yeah, know, I mean, really, like, consider everything, right? It's a mindset. Yeah. Mindset. You know how they say you're right if you uh, you say you can or cannot. So, mm -hmm. oh, I'm drained, therefore I'm emotionally disconnected, because you choose to disconnect. I mean, really, I, 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 I'm that serious. I'm not, you know, many people are gonna, you know, disagree with me. I've been on these zero carb diets. I mean, like I said, you know, Jesus Christ, like you know, six weeks of. Listen, I couldn't even afford chicken breast back in Serbia because that was expensive, right? So it was uh, chicken liver. And so now chicken liver you can make uh, nicely, but uh, not to be so disgusting, but boiled chicken liver, it's like impossible to eat. I was eating five, five times a day, five times a day, boiled chicken wow. liver. I mean, you can't even chew it. You have to put it like a couple of chews and then wash it down with the hand. And then the whole house was thinking, and my father would say, say it's either you're going to get out of the house or I will, right? And so one of those things. <laughs> but uh, so uh, miserable and all that stuff, but a conversation discussing my day, my goals, my plans, asking how is your day, mom, sister, or dad, you know, that was a normal thing at all times. Uh, again, listen. I'm not trying to put myself above anybody and say I'm right and you should follow my advice. But no, this is good. This is good. But you, you two are there. I say, okay, you can. We are affected with the diet and tired and all that shit. What this changes as far as your emotional connection? What will change it? You're both suffering. You're tired. Maybe you're not so talkative. But the same questions are still the same questions in conversation. You know, I just think that people don't communicate enough. They just let it. Yeah, yeah. I think alone. we still communicate. I just think we want to be touched less. Yeah, I, I guess I could say Milos uh, yeah. to, to kind of touch less. No, no, like hope. No, no, hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Here, 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 Alexia. Hmm. I think touch is so underestimated. That's why when uh, when Chris says like, "Oh, boobs are there," well, fucking touch it. As soon I'll as just be like, talk, okay, grab it, and then just yeah. leave it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not just, uh, you know, Milos, you know, this, just one, one. this one likes to scare me, slap me, smack me. Yeah. So, so it's like, like the so like hey, how about I'm this? Prep and I'm doing dishes, she's gonna come behind me, grab my ass, and start trying to and do all this shit or poke me. So like when I'm in prep, I look at her and I'm like, I love it. I scared that, him a lot last great, time. Okay. That's fun. Chris, it is, but you you know what though? You are right, is in me disconnecting is a choice that I make on how I currently at the time handle that fatigue, right? Mm. Because you're right. It is a choice because there's times in prep where I actually thought things were funny and I was actually more normal. Yeah. And the more you prep, the more I have become more normal. I think it also has to do with your yeah. outside stressors, like how much work you're doing. Because when, you, when your work's light, you're like in such better mood. And yeah. I also think it's like those, how you're handling your stressors in that moment in time. Yeah. But you know what, Milos, that's, you are right, you know, um, because it is a response that we take to how to handle how we're feeling with the conscious decisions we're making to prep. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be that way, right? It doesn't. But when you were saying about, Alexis like said, touching, I mean, I think, and this is really what I want to express and think about this. When... 
I don't like to be touched by anybody, but I love to be touched by the person that I love. I mean, gee, yeah. touch, don't take your hands off me. Okay, you know, stuff like that. You know, so the, the different things when you say touch in general. Hug. Hug is most underestimated, most healing thing ever. Just hug yourself for no reason. And you see what happens within seconds. I mean, seriously, if you transfer that energy of the hug, I mean, Chris, nobody else can touch you and should touch you. So you're being untouched. And then Alexia comes and hugs you. Uh, even if you're stressed and you know, you're going to now start thinking of those boobs that can, you can jiggle and <laughs> all this shit, you know, whatever your mind takes you there. But on a serious note, hug anybody that is in trouble. You know, when do we hug people? Uh, when they're, you know, sad and crying and all this stuff. And this is the moments that you choose to hug because that's healing and then, you know, to relieve some why just then? Why do you have to be sad to deserve the hug? No, you're right. You know, hugging him, seeing somebody in a while or somebody accomplishes something, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. it's like, yeah, I, I, I totally get it. I have to say, Milos, you've changed my perspective. You've changed my perspective a bit on that, you know? Um, well, I mean, we always talk about mindset and discipline. Like everything is a choice. Happiness is a choice. So, I mean, why can't being available be a choice? You know, it's funny, Milos, like I, the older I get, and I'm sure you were like that too, as you got an older, like bodybuilding is. I got told it much, much long ago. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, bodybuilding for me was, it's about, it was, it used to be when it first started about improving my body, but then eventually you start to realize that you have to improve your mind with your body. And then as I've gotten older now, I'm always like, man, I don't like that about myself. I don't like how that causes me anxiety. I'm going to learn how to not have anxiety around that anymore. So her and I always talk about mindset and perspective change and how I can be better for her, how she can be better for me, or how Ourself. overall I can just be a better person, better version of myself. And taking that nugget you just said, which is kind of really resonating with me right now, a lot, <laughs> now that I really think about it. Now I'm going to really think about that. Um, you is, that but, but do you do the daily, nightly introspection? Okay. What did I do today that I should or shouldn't? What did I say today that I should or shouldn't? You know, things like this. And then we realize, okay, today I failed to do this, this, and that. I could have. Just because you can do everything that you want to do, it doesn't mean you can do the little thing that you can, being who you are that day for, for whatever purpose. I mean, we it's so easy to disconnect. And I didn't do nothing today or this week or this month or this year. And this energy. Was your choice? You choose not to. Okay, so introspection brings you to that point. What did I do today that I should or shouldn't? What did I say to Alexia that I should or should? Oh, you know, honey, I said this. I really shouldn't. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not going to do it again. But if you don't realize this, next day you're going to say it again and again. Yeah. You know, like this. You know, this kind of stuff. But uh, but I, I just really really think that um, communication. It's where it's at. Honest, oh, yeah. deep communication, meaningful. I mean, you can say shit that means nothing. It's just blabbing. Yeah, you know, yeah. What was the last meaningful thing that we did for each other? And we talked about, you know, so, so like, yeah. uh, I promise you, this is the first time I'm involved in this kind of conversation. I don't talk. This is, I, I'm not uh, prepared. Well, you're a secret therapist. We know. Yeah, you're a secret therapist, Milos. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just. You know, blab my 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 thoughts. You know, that's why I'm saying. I mean, I apologize if I cross the line sometimes. No, this is good stuff. We never really get offended by anything. I think the one thing is when I was missing out on that emotional connection. I think it was I don't know two times ago or something. I would buy these stupid little things on Amazon to like promote connecting a bit more. Like we're, we're eating, I'm like asking him a question <laughs> on certain things. Um, I think anything to start a conversation that leads to a better conversation is is good for us and probably good for most people. So, I mean, I mean, this is, I have this, this podcast has been awesome, but I mean, I guess in a nutshell, when it comes to when a significant other is competing on both sides, one is to have the conversation beforehand about the demand of maybe double sessions of exercise, the demand of food preparation being more strict, not eating out, of course. And then the other is like really formulating a plan to do things with each other 
that quality, may, time. That quality time that does not have to do with eating, right? Eating out. Um, and then of course, uh, proper communication, right? Like communicating through the, the preparation. If somebody's struggling or being tired, help them. Um, if they're not, you know, be patient. But I think like you said, Milos, it's, it's communication. It's for kind of talking about what they, what it might entail. And don't think that, you know, the, the effort they're putting in is choosing that person second. They're just doing what makes them happy and it's going to be temporary and they'll be back after. And being insightful know? on your own behaviors. Cause we've seen people in prep lash out to a significant oh, other. Yeah. And then you have to be like, Oh shit. Like that wasn't warranted. I, I should probably talk to them about that. Yeah. I had a guy write Milos once and, I, and like, I've always been a one man army in prep, meaning I prep all my food. I check my scale. I have everything with me. It's me, me, me in regards to my checklist. And I had a client be like, Oh, I just blew up my wife because she got my forgot. She forgot my fucking scale, my posing trunks. I go, no, Kimo Sabe. I go, you forgot your posing trunks and your scale. I go, that's your responsibility. You're competing. If I, if I'm going to war, okay, I'm not comparing war by any means to bodybuilding, but like if I'm compa- uh, preparing to go camping or go on an expedition, I'm not going to count on somebody else to make sure I have my compass, my knife, my drinking water, all the essentials of survival. I'm going to double check my bag to make sure it's in there. It's on you. So like when people are like, oh, my wife didn't make my food right. Wh- wh- why is your wife making all your food? Like you, if your wife messes your food up, you shouldn't even be mad at her. That's, that's something that you do. That's yeah, that's something that you do. She put the two grams of whatever more than you're supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You want to get that? You're like. Yeah, I had that before. I had that before. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like do you, secret oils. Just... Do you, you hear that Branch Warren story where yeah. Branch started, mar- uh, was dating Trish? She did, He she made food so good and Branch is used to eating like just bare right. bones, everything bland. And he's like, this chicken was so good. I, I kind of felt bad. He goes, I, I kind of yelled at her. He go, you trying to sabotage my food? You trying to sabotage my shit? He goes, you trying to mess up my prep? This food tastes too good. Oh. And then they got in a big fight. And the lady's like, I just found out she's really better cooked than me. But it was the same stuff. <laughs> so oh, funny. That's funny. I can, I, can, I can see him saying it. <laughs> yeah. You trying to sabotage my prep? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Milos? I mean, other than, you know, a lot of perspectives, I know you have clients that probably, uh, you know, ask you some of the things about libido and stuff. And ultimately, some of it's preventable, some of it's not. But I mean... For those of you who are affected by sex drive, you know, yeah. you, you do what you can for your partner, but ultimately it is going to be temporary, you know, um, it will or be double check what you're doing. Cause it could possibly be an adjustment there And communications key, you know, it is, <laughs> I mean, uh, pharmacologically you're right to be, uh, maybe this, uh, anti estrogens are way too high, you know, and you know how it is, you know, guys just do all kinds of shit because we're supposed to, they have a list. And everybody else does it. In, you do things, you know, this is just anti estrogens according. You have some sensitivity that you uh, assume, you know, something is happening, aromatization. You don't, I have guys that pretty much don't take any, you know, yeah. especially. Uh, I, I, have, I believe it. And then I have a guys that came from some other coaches. That, okay, I'm going to say it even. They were taking three milligrams of arimidex a day plus. Oh milligrams. yeah, yeah. I said, "What? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? So, yeah." So it is. I don't know how this uh, cycles came about and just they throwing everything in, everything in, everything in. You know, uh, I, I you, you probably don't know that I was hired by Bill Phillips back in ninety five to do an anabolic reference guide number six or seven, which, you know, he had those books on the body craft yep. guy. And then uh, he actually, you know, thank God, introduced me to Charles Parkins because Charles and I are supposed to do this. That's how Charles and I met, you know, to do that. And we were, you know, working on it. And then, you know, he changed his mind, uh, Bill Phillips, and became all this natural. Muscle Media 2000 became natural, natural, natural. So he didn't want to talk about uh, uh, anabolics. But, you know, for me, you know, as always, as I discussed with Charles, you, you have a three natural occurring uh, androgens, DHT, 
uh, testosterone and nitine nor, you know, nandrolones, right? So when you do the testosterone, TRT, you just boost testosterone, right? But uh, for us, because we want anabolic action, we can up all three. So you choose, you know, what you're going to mix, you know, so, and then the things that are aromatized and you are, you know, feeling it, okay, suppress that a little bit, a little bit. But if you do throw in all this kind of stuff, I mean, that's why I, I guess the, the guys that I'm working with, they never had this issue, right? Because you do what you're supposed to measure and controlled. I, I, I'm not trying to make this. I don't know what losing libido means. For me, the yeah. disabled was sexy, you know, fucking, I could be in a, you know, Jesus, uh, bend over, please. You know what I mean? <laughs> take, take, take two and a half milligrams of Letro every day. You'll find out real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I like hated Letro. Uh, Milos. I think I was like, I, dude, I'm with you hundred percent. You see these cycles and you're like, don't even how you come up with that. Or if there's an, if there even isn't a reason for that. And it's just like, I, I had a client the other day. He's a week and a half out and he looks fantastic. And he's like, so are we going to up our, our, our Remedex? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't have your plan in front of me. Let me look. And I'm like, well, we're doing one milligram every other day. I go, that, that's fine. We look fine. Yeah, but isn't that a low dose? I go, yeah, but don't you look great? Yeah, yeah. I look great. I look dry. I'm like, then I why are we adding it? Thing. Why are exactly. we adding it just to thing. add it? Yeah. Oh, but doesn't it more uh, dries you out even more? I mean, Jesus Christ. You know, you can dry out in many other ways. You don't have to pharmacologically fuck yourself up here to have this little extra dryness from this. I mean, yeah. uh, and then, uh, oh, I added. I say, you piss me off now. You, you know, you hire me to coach you, right? And yeah. then you, you're throwing shit uh, like this yourself. And then, uh, oh, I didn't tell you. And it's usually after the show, there is sometimes confession time, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, you know. Do you think you cheat me or yourself? I mean, uh, I this the more days. is more people. And, but, but the worst part about it, Mills, is you know, like you, you see them 10 days out and they're like, awesome. Mm. They're like, yeah. fucking great. And all of a sudden, the day the show comes, you're like, what happened? And they yeah. do all these crazy things to try to get better, better, better. And then just destroy their look. Yeah. Mm. It's many, many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Milos, I'm so glad we have a, a the very similar perspective on that. But you know, this, this relationship and competing thing, I really do think we hit all the bases. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different things we got, but it all comes down to the communication aspect, ha setting those expectations and just really honestly having a good, I would say, foundation before you even do anything in a relationship. Well, that goes back to what you said, Milos, about when you have a match, the other person is happy for you, yeah. seeing you happy doing what you love. And it's like, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, see their husband's hobby or or wife's hobby as like oh it's so stupid i don't know why she does that like well that's 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 toxic right i mean that's a whole nother aspect outside of competing and there's obviously people who like to control the other person and you know there's some unfairness but as far as being a match having communication um and really giving them expectations throughout prep beforehand so it's not a shock to them that you might be a little quieter than normal. Maybe your sex drive might be a little less or might be the same like Milos. <laughs> also have insight so you're not a dick Yeah, or a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And if you're cranky and you're hungry, but remember you're doing this yourself. So try to be patient with that individual. Um, but I mean, it's all possible. It's all doable. Um, I know people that can be the same damn person when they're in the off season as they are in prep, right? Oh, we know. They're that. the same goofy person. Um, Steve, mm -hmm. Steve. Yeah, Steve. We love Steve. One of my clients, Steve, same exact personality when he's 280 pounds or he's 220 pounds shredded. The same goofy, funny dude. Well, he, he's, I think, a little goofier when he's fat. because Oh, he's a little funny. Yeah, yeah, he loves being fat. Like Milos, this dude yeah. loves being fat that like three months after the show, he comes over and he goes, you know how you told me not to get fat last year? I go, yeah. He goes, well, fuck that. He pulls his stomach out and he goes, you see this? He goes, this is happiness. <laughs> he jiggles his he jiggles his stomach around. Okay. So first I was gonna say I love Steve now, but I was saying it, but then now that you say you know he's just lies to himself and you know compromises. Listen, there is no excuse, no excuse to work your ass off 
to get yourself super shredded, super ready and all that stuff. And then allow yourself to again, becomes a fat slug. This is not, not in it. There's a, you know, whoever said anything, you're bullshitting yourself. You're okay. And a lot of people go, okay, let's lie to ourselves and let's, let's have a lie as a life. Bodybuilders. Why do we bodybuild to be fat? No, no. When I have a let your look right now, Chris, your look, and I and I envy you because you are you know so perfect right now, right? This is why you train, and this is what you love. I mean, when you're in shape and any which way you you move and shit, you feel your abs and you feel you know fibers are going on. I'm sure that you can uh, flirt with Alexia and just like look at one direction, say nothing, you'll get what you want, right? But this this guy, I mean, listen for all the guys. You train so goddamn hard and died so goddamn hard. And then now he's saying they take everything and anything in a book, not just anabolics and anti-catabolics and, uh, you know, fucking uh, uh, remedics and uh, anti-estrogens, everything, thyroid, T3, T4, trimbuterol, this kind of fat burners, everything in the book. For the love of God, you have no fat. Okay, why are you now adding trimbuterol on top of it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, just, oh, because it's expected? Chat. But anyway, and then you get yourself to whatever that the contest shape that you have right now. Okay. Dog is off the leash. Now let me eat everything I don't supposed to. And I'm just going to block my mind and lie to myself and just going to stop myself for like about a week. And then after a week, it's too late now. I'm already fat. And I say, fuck it. I'm just going to be fat and show Chris, look at this. Oh, I'm so proud of this fat. Come on, Steve. I, I mean, I don't know you. I love you because... He looks like you're a super good guy. He doesn't compete anymore. He doesn't compete anymore. It's not his thing. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, Hopefully he got back and he, well, the, he, but the, like, he doesn't want to lose it again. Right. But like you said, there's a lot of people like that. But Milos, in yeah. closing, you'd be happy to know um, that I'm only 2.1 pounds heavier than the day I did my posing module. And I'm up to about 450 grams of carbs. I'm doing 50 migs of testinethate three times per week which has my current serum levels at about 510. I got that checked. I'll get it checked again in two and a half weeks. So testosterone levels normal. My labs are perfect. My food's up. My performance is great. And I'm still, suit. I still have striations in my glutes. I'm yeah, still very lean. Uh, following, yeah. following suit with you. This, yeah. this off season, I'm going to, I, I don't care about staying shredded, but like, I'm not going to get fat. I'm going to be in shape, feed the, feed the performance and methodically improve the weak parts of my physique and then see where we are. Exciting. You remember this one? Yeah. Oh, every man over a thousand. Over <laughs> you, you just say you're 500. You're normal. Five, it's okay. Five, ten. Yeah, I said like, okay, why wouldn't you elevate it to a thousand, you know? This is why. I, 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 happier, you know? <laughs> well, this is why. Because I feel really good. Okay. So I am going to increase it so like, uh, you know, two and a half weeks when I get my levels again, I'll increase it. But I feel awesome. Yeah. Good, Sex good, drive, good. training, soreness, but I'm progressing. So I'm going to get, if I feel this good, let it roll. And then obviously when I start uh -huh. on the next cycle, I'll bring it up. Now that now you say your sex drive, what are you now up to once every other week? No, no, no. <laughs> day, no. Once a week? Yeah, on a Wednesday. No, it's, it's, it's let me look of, at my 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 records. Yeah, not... <laughs> no, no, listen, it's a twice a day mandatory. This is this is it, man. You know, when you become like five, 59 years old, then things are gonna change a little bit. The goddamn, you know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, right now, hey, listen, if I would be Alexia, I'd say, man, your husband, that's a duty. You know, I, I need that's your duty, bro. Check the tires twice a day. <laughs> it's my duty when i when i when i do the closing on this podcast it's gonna be funny as hell i'm telling you yeah. that right now all right, all right. <laughs> okay yeah so but uh, alexia I, I loved hearing a woman's perspective on this one and, and you're perfect because yeah. you experienced your competitor you're married to a pro bodybuilder that's gonna compete again qualify for mr olympia and then we're gonna have a mr olympia special about uh you know that one i'm looking forward to this chris uh really and Alexia, it was a pleasure talking to you. You know, I hopefully you too. We can awesome. talk about different subjects some other time. Agree. Yeah. For sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy my uh 
Mochi, Mochi. Yeah, I'm going to look that up, Milo. So I'm going to tell we're going to have a discussion yeah. next time on all that. On carving up. Yeah. Good all right, sure. Milos, man. Hey, I really appreciate it, too. That was awesome. And I'm going to say that little nugget that you said today about the choice you're making. Did, did we have a podcast? To associate that. Therapy session. I don't no, but like that, sometimes people say things and it sticks in my head. Yeah. And then once it's stuck in my head, that was it. Like, like now I'm going to think about that. Mm hmm yeah, listen, you heard me say this. I use Socrates all the time. I can't teach you anything. I can make you think. Okay? Yeah. So that's how my father was always. He wouldn't say, you know, you, know, you just throw in something and then when you think like, God damn, you know, he's right. So I have to do that. Yeah. Well, he didn't want me to do it. But like, why are you so fun. wise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, listen, I'm just honest to myself. I don't bullshit my, you know, really. So start with this. Do you want to maximize or just... Optimize and minimize. That's the one thing. Okay. Maximize and everything. Do yeah. You want to maximize Over everything. <laughs> okay. Except when you have a four minute uh, period. Yeah. So you have a four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do. see what you can do. You can, yeah. Yeah. Show me what you got. You know. So the other thing is do the right thing. Right. Okay. Make a right choice. You know, and that's it. And just communicate, communicate. Whoever. I mean, you two. That's most important communication. Really, everything else does not matter as much as you two. So please communicate more and uh, talk to you guys soon. Awesome. All right, Milos. See yeah. you later, buddy. Talk to yeah. you next week.